So Michael, where are we now? So uh, today we're at the uh, Sovereign House in uh, Oakville. Um, technically it's Bronte, but uh, part of Oakville. And uh, yeah, we've never been here before. This is, uh, it's always interesting to go to an area that you're familiar with, but um, you find these hidden little gems. So this is the, it's like a historical building. And what is this building right now using for? So as far as I understand, um, in the, I think in the warmer weather, it's used as an art gallery uh, and maybe like a community center so people can rent it out. Um, and then like for instance today, uh, it's being used for uh, a festive occasion um, for, for children to visit Santa. So, um, yeah, I like this house. I like it as my subject matter. Um, and then, you know, once I set up my easel, I'm just considering where my the the extreme bounds of my composition will be. Mm -hmm. So, oftentimes, I'm I'm kind of uh, cropping in, and I'm kind of making a mental note of where I want the top ends, the bottom, the left, and the right to be cropped. Um, and then. I'm also thinking about where my horizon line is. Um, in this case, it's kind of low. It's about a, a third of the height. So I'll, probably, I'll draw that in, and then everything else will be filled in from that. Um, the other thing I'm thinking compositionally that I like about this is I like things that overlap because it helps your, you feel like you're moving into the painting. And so I actually kind of like this bush being a little bit overlapping the house um, and then there's that bush there that's overlapping the, the porch area and then the tree is overlapping the trees in the background so I like that kind of stacked layering um, and then of course the uh, the composition of the house I like the perspective that I'm getting so I want to try to get that I have to keep correcting while I'm painting so it's, I don't know, I feel like it's, I like to just be careful where I'm putting things in the first place. What do you use for sketching? Is it a um, pencil? Is it a, oh no, it's a charcoal? Yeah, it's a charcoal stick. Um, and why would you like to use that instead of pencil? Uh, it's actually, it's a vine charcoal. Okay. So what it is, is it's like a soft piece of charcoal. So the thing I like about that, see if I have a charcoal pencil here, but it's a little bit harder. Okay. And when I make a mark, it's it's quite permanent. But I find with the vine charcoal, let's see, oh, I can just even with a paper towel. Can you do it again? It comes off. Yeah, see. Oh, I see. It's just so I can. It's so easy. I find uh, I can make large strokes, and then I can easily remove them if I need to. And then when I'm painting. It doesn't really seem to affect the paint that much. Uh, like I'll just paint right over, and then the, the charcoal just gets absorbed by the paint. So, yeah, because you know, plain air painting, it's just it's a matter of you only have minutes sometimes to get things down. And for me personally, I, I like the sense of immediacy that I get from this. The other thing is, I like, uh, even though I'm marking generally where things are going, I am I feel like I'm not committal, committed, you know, like, uh, 
Hi there. <laughs> Sorry, It's okay, no problem. Okay. Yeah, go okay. So now, Michael, you finish the um, sketch. Now, what is our next step? So, what I'd like to do is uh, just spend some time considering what colors I'm going to use. Uh, I don't know it's like a personal enjoyment of my own of mine to uh, use as limited amount of palette as possible. Uh, I don't know. I, it's like a personal thing. I feel like so many artists use a, a lot of colors, and I like to be like direct. And just use, almost try to use less colors and get away with. <laughs> and then, if I absolutely need more colors, then to add it. Um, yeah. So, I'm looking at the scene, and I'm thinking about, uh, you know, for my darks. Like definitely, I'm going to use an ivory black to help me get some of my darkest darks. Um, I actually do have a chromatic black uh, that I've mixed my my own colors uh, from old tubes. Uh, so it's not quite as dark as the uh, ivory black, just because of the colors I mixed. Um, it's gonna help me get maybe some of the darkness of the trees. And then I got my uh, ultramarine blue, uh, which actually I'm probably only gonna use for the, to get the greens on the grass, because there's not really that much blue or green. Uh, yeah. Cadmium red to help me get some of the browns. Uh, mix it with my black. And then I was thinking for yellow, I'm just going to use a yellow ochre because, especially with this lighting, um, it's an overcast lighting and there's no real intense yellow. Or maybe if it was like the summertime, I would want to use more of a cadmium yellow. Yep, and the white. That's it. Did you mix all this color, Michael? No, I I tubed them from uh, I bought uh, maybe like a pint, a container that comes in a pint of paint, and then I just tubed some empty empty tubes. Um, yeah. Uh, some of the I don't have anything here. Sometimes what I do have colors that I like to mix myself to get the right uh, range that I'm looking for. And then I'm also trying to, it's funny how like cadmium red is one of the most expensive colors. <laughs> so I tend to use, unless I absolutely need a lot, but I find I don't need that much cadmium red. I think because its tinting strength is so strong that it goes a long way. But I put out, I try to estimate how much I think I'll need of each color. And usually white is the color I need the most. So Michael, what are you doing now? After you laid all the colors on your palette? Yeah, so I have you know, I've, I usually lay from my uh, darkest to my lights. Um, you know, they say it's good to get into the habit so that when you're painting, you don't really have to think much. You just kind of go intuitively to the colors that you're looking for. 
Uh, but now, um, this is another personal preference. Is I like to make pools of color, uh, pre-mix them, and then when it gets to the painting stage, I don't really have to think much about it. I just dip into my existing colors. Um, I think it's because I'm, I've always been envious of pastel painters, how they go out and, you know, if they're plain air painting, they just pick the right color and then just paint. You know? And as an oil painter, I thought, you know, that would be nice to go out and have the perfect colors for the scene I want. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for myself is establish all my major colors. Yeah, it's crazy, eh? See, so it's beautiful with the sun because of the patterns of the trees.
Oh, that sky's so blue, man. I initially mixed my colors for overcast lighting and the sun is coming out and it's doing two things. It's changing the, my color palette and it's also illuminating my canvas um, and making it, giving it a glare <laughs> that I didn't previously have. So, uh, yeah. So, but basically um, I'm, I am trying to stick to um, the overcast color palette.
money. Sure, we can't check your work from the same. <laughs> <laughs> It's beautiful, Michael. Oh, thank you, Peter. Very nice work. Thank you. Tell us about what you think. Yeah, so this was uh, quite a challenge, actually, because um, when the lighting conditions change uh, from what you plan, um, you know, as you see before, I was planning my composition and my color palette and everything. And then as soon as I started painting, the sun came out and changed all my colors. It cast shadows on the building. And then to top it off, uh, the sun caused a, a really bright glare on my canvas. Um, I guess that's one of the disadvantages of oil painting is that when you get a glare, it can be very shiny. So I, f I felt like I've been, I was painting blind when I was doing this one. Um, I kind of kind of had to stand to the side and kind of evaluate my, my colors and uh, and then continue painting. So yeah, but you know, as we always say, that's that's the, uh, the joy and the challenge of plein air painting is that you're going outside and you're dealing with the environmental conditions and you're doing the best that you can. So, very nice, Michael. Thank you. It's a very nice painting. Thank you. And thank you for your process that telling us and uh, you want to see what I uh, did? Yes. Are you uh, painting? Yeah. I did yes. a little watercolor. Okay. So Michael, today I'm the photographer, a videographer of our little um, YouTube things. And uh, while you were painting, um, I did a little watercolor on my, on my own. And uh, this is what I did. It's beautiful. And um, like you said, a little bit of challenge because of the lighting changes. Mm -hmm. But I uh, managed to uh, get something on that paper. Wonderful. Still. Yeah. A good, uh, a worthy trip. Yes. This morning. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you, Peter. Thank You're you so welcome. much.